Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where you can find all of your basic guides on Total War games. As requested, we are looking at the Regiment of Renown units for each faction. Today we'll be covering the Skaven roster. If you haven't already, check out my unit roster guide for the Skaven, as this one will only cover the Regiments of Renown and their individual roles. It should be noted that I will not cover the stat improvements for the units, as all Regiment of Renown versions will always have improved stats. The comparisons to the normal variants will be shown in the unit cards. Clan Volk and Tail Slashers are the first Regiment of Renown unit, and they are Clan Rats with shields. They get an added bonus of 70% fire resistance as well as flaming attacks. This alongside its combat bonuses make it a decent melee combatant, especially if fighting against enemies with regeneration or undead units. Ixia's triads are pretty much the same as their normal variant with the added ability called Doppelgang. When activated, Ixia's triads become unspottable and create an image of themselves as a decoy. This decoy unit does not do damage, but they are extremely useful for holding down an enemy allowing the real version to flank and surround them. This infantry should be still kept on the flanks of your front lines to help fend off any charges from cav or monstrous units. The biggest difference between Visktrin's death squad and their normal counterparts is the duck and weave ability, which provides an extra 10% physical resistance and 10 melee defense. This makes the death squad much more survivable in a fight both in terms of absorbing damage and not being hit at all. Brightscab's Plague Packs are the same as their standard variant, except for the fact that they provide an incredibly strong buff to allies around them, giving them immunity to psychology. This is very useful to have when facing against fear and terror causing units, and it's pretty helpful given that the Skaven roster is very low in leadership. Place these near the center behind your front lines and bolster any parts of your frontline engagements that need help with armored units. The Council Guard are unbreakable storm vermins with halberds, which makes them extremely useful given the nature of the Skaven's roster. They also come with the added ability called Guardian, which gives 15% extra physical resistance to nearby lords and heroes. This unit is great for anchoring down your flimsy front lines. The Teethbreakers are rattling gunners, and their only difference is now they have concealment bombs. This ability allows them to stealthily reposition on the battlefield to get some devastating volleys in, Place them behind your front lines in checkerboard formation or on elevated grounds to decimate armored enemies. Natty Bubo's sharpshooters are warplock gazelles with stalk and snipe. This makes them an incredibly long-ranged unit that can't be seen unless the enemy has units close by, which means they can't be countered by other missiles. For this reason, Natty Bubo's sharpshooters are an incredibly costly and difficult unit to deal with. Utilize them in the same way as the regular variant targeting heavy cav, elite infantry, monsters, lords, and heroes. The primary difference of the avalanche mortars is that this unit shoots death globes instead of poison wind globes. Their orbs break apart in the air just before landing to create a more scattershot effect that can devastate a unit with just a few volleys rather than dealing damage over time like the standard variant. Notably, their accuracy is not the best, so it is difficult for them to hit fast-moving targets Make sure to prioritize firing into infantry targets first. The Pit Fighters of Hell's Deep have two added abilities, the first one being immunity to psychology and the second being berserk, which is an insanely strong ability if the unit is engaged in melee for long periods of time. Use these for your flanking tactics and try keeping them away from anti-large infantry. Morskatar's Hellion is pretty much the same as its normal counterpart aside from its new ability called Warp Discharge which causes enemies to be hit by a vortex while in melee combat with the Rat Ogre. This ability is a bit underwhelming as it only lasts 2 seconds and the Rat Ogre would need to be completely surrounded in order to fully utilize the area affected by the vortex. Make sure to utilize it in the same way as Rat Ogres and Mutant Rat Ogres. The main differences for the Thing Thing is that it now has poison attacks and an added ability called Fluid Injection, which increases armor piercing damage melee attack, and base weapon damage for the unit, but the unit starts to rampage. You should still use this unit on the frontline engagements, just send it in, activate the ability, and watch it wreak havoc. Ickets Zap Zap are warp lightning cannons with the added effect that their missile fire increases the enemy's ability recharge time by 10 seconds. This is a minor added effect, but still worth taking given the improved stats. These will be used for taking out armored large targets, heroes, and lords. The Dwarf Thing Menace are Doom Flares with added armor sundering and now cause fear. These are extremely useful for dealing with heavily armored infantry on the battlefield, 
Armor Sundering does reduce the enemy's armor by 30. Given their speed, you will use these for recharging the heavily armored portions of the frontline engagements. The Wheels of Doom is just a Doom Wheel with two projectiles per volley over the standard variant, allowing its missile attacks to do even more damage. This is still a strong chariot unit and should be used as such. So that about wraps it up for the Regiment of Renown units of the Skaven roster. Hope you found it useful for your Skaven campaigns. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you drop a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already.